The Gage recently launched Billy Bootleg Society, a whiskey-focused club. Beverage director and spirits expert Torrance O'Hare is here in our Studio 41 kitchen to tell us all about it. Yeah, we're going to learn how to make the perfect old-fashioned and what to pair whiskey with with food. Thanks for being here. Yeah, morning. How are you? I am learning a lot already, that's for sure, and I <laughs> like a good whiskey. Yeah, it, this, uh, it's really fun to be able to put together a collection of spirits like this because uh, where the, the field of whiskey is so wide and so varied, it really does take a, uh, a quote-unquote spirit guide to help make <laughs> sure that you know what you're doing and what you're finding and the value of it and, and show you things that are actually interesting and unique as opposed to something that you could effectively get anywhere. All right, so the Bootleg Society gives you a new whiskey how often? So it's a new whiskey every month. Month. Effectively, what I do is put together a collection of uh, unique projects, individual productions, single barrels, basically how you age a spirit, whether it's whiskey, rum, cognac, anything that ages in a barrel, depending everything down to how you built the barrel, where you store the barrel, everything wow. about it. Each individual barrel produces a different spirit. And so when you're a big brand whiskey, your job is to taste a little bit of every single one of your thousand barrels and blend it together so it always tastes exactly the same. Uh, but for our projects, we go, yeah, but what about that individual barrel that doesn't taste like the same main brand, but has some really cool iterations, has some really cool variation to it? And so we buy that individual ah. barrel that is sort of like a cool variation of a known product, uh, and then we give out half of that to our club members. So I have to ask, because this is where I used to get really confused. Uh, you know, you go down the, the liquor aisle and it's whiskey and bourbon, or whiskey bourbon. Like, what is the difference? Yeah. Uh, t very little. Okay. Uh, all bourbon is whiskey, not all whiskey is bourbon. Got it, okay. Uh, it's also false that bourbon has to come from Kentucky. That's not true, it's just a, a, a colloquialism. Uh, basically, it, it is all about what grain and what blend goes into making your whiskey. All whiskey is a grain spirit, 99.9% uh, uh, .9 of it aged in a barrel. Uh, bourbon has extra rules on top of it as to what grains you can use, how old it has to be, what the barrel actually is like. Uh, so buying bourbon knows that it's jumped through those specific hoops. Got it. Uh, but whiskey as a macro category, like whether or not it's bourbon does not have anything to do with whether or not it's good. It's just a specific style of whiskey with those rules followed. Oh, All right. Good. I see why you need a spirit yes. guy because I was sitting there like my head was going, whoa. Exactly, yeah. Let's talk about this old fashioned yes. that you're going to Make Absolutely. For us. So, an old fashioned, uh, it's there's a lot of different iterations of old fashions. You see them like splashes of juice and soda yeah. and all kinds of crazy things. But when you take it back to the original roots, all an old fashioned is supposed to do is sort of smooth, polish, and highlight a quality spirit. Okay. Uh, and then if you're not using a quality spirit, that's when you add in all the extra <laughs> stuff because okay. now you're kind of covering up the edges. Okay. Uh, but all you really need for an old fashioned is a little bit of sugar syrup that I've got right here. Uh, you need the spirit. And yes, you know, people think of old fashioned as a bourbon cocktail, but we at the Gage make killer old fashions out of high end cognac or Ooh. really nice rum. Aged tequila makes Ooh. a great old fashioned. Really? Uh, essentially, you just stir to combine, or if you were using granulated sugar, you would stir to dissolve your sugar. Uh huh. And then you add a little bit of ice. Uh, you're going for proper dilution because, again, most spirits, uh, they're not really meant to be drunk straight out of the bottle. You need a splash of water to sort of bring everything into balance. Okay. Uh, you stir it just long enough so that the outside of the glass feels cold because effectively then you've chilled the spirit to the right temperature and you've also diluted the spirit to the correct dilution. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's your old fashioned. It's as simple as that. Because, again, with a spirit like, for instance, this Sauterne barrel aged bourbon that I'm using that's a part of our club. Uh, it's so elegant, it's so subtle, it's so unique that yes, optionally you garnish with citrus twists, optionally you add bitters, all of these things, but with something like this, it doesn't need extra flavor because it's so soft and subtle as it is that effectively you're just gonna end up tasting bitters as opposed to tasting this really unique spirit. You're not throwing a maraschino cherry in there? Uh, you know, again, <laughs> no. like you're welcome to garnish it as you like, but a traditional old fashioned is 
is about highlighting a, a, a fine spirit as opposed to making a fine spirit taste like splashes of Coke and maraschino cherries. Right, okay, so, so what does this pair best with? So this spirit in and of itself, and uh, when you talk about pairing spirits with food, it really is about recognizing the intensity and the texture of the food against the intensity and the texture of the spirit. So spirits always are going to have an intensity of alcohol to them. Mm -hmm. So like you want to uh, uh, avoid anything spicy because heat spice and alcohol spice compound each other. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, whereas if you have food that's sort of like soft and creamy and luxurious, think like lobster risotto. Ooh. Ooh. And you've got this sort of like silky rich whiskey that's got a little bit of texture from that alcoholic heat, but effectively the lobster risotto doesn't have a lot of texture, so it actually sort of supports each other. Yeah. Uh, you get really interesting flavor combinations and flavor pairing uh, mechanics in the way that you would pair wine with food. Oh, yeah, I know we're I just sitting like, there like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, food, food and spirit pairing is really great. People kind of write it off assuming that like, well, you know, you drink wine with food and a cocktail before dinner. But I mean, you know, think of the flavor combinations of this really elegant, salty, smoky scotch alongside of oysters. Mm. It's, it's yeah. a, you don't think of it, but it really works. It's a and very And so you provide thing. this service at the gate. We so do, So we absolutely. come in and you, you buy something and you're, or you, you we, order something. We help something. you put your dinners together. Together yes. with all sorts of interesting pairings, whether it is a wine pairing or pairings of all of our unique spirits, uh, uh, we can we put together flights so you can experiment mm. with you know what styles of whiskey you like better. You can learn more about the stylistic differences between bourbon and other types yeah. of whiskey. Uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a, a really great way to go into understanding whiskey uh, for a novice. You don't have to be a you know million dollar collection of whiskey holder, and you also don't have to be drinking just to get plastered. You can enjoy it <laughs> in sort of a, 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 a subtle, uh, a really interesting way that you might enjoy a glass of wine with dinner. Absolutely. You can adult. You can yeah. be an adult. You can adult. Yeah. Exactly. Go adulting. Thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you it. for having me.